The only permanent relief for COVID-19 will come with a vaccine. Many nations are taking part in a race to develop drugs effective against the coronavirus, including Israel, and many researchers here are applying their efforts just to that task. Now, among them is Tel Aviv University's Professor Jonathan Gershoni, who has just received a patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for his innovative vaccine design for the corona family of viruses. Jonathan, thank you for joining us again. Of What's course, there? a lot of excitement. This has become the holy grail, the coronavirus vaccine. Just give us an idea what you are working on specifically. Well, uh, we're working on the active ingredient of vaccines. If you look at a, a medication capsule, they may have different colors and so on, but we all really want to know what is the active ingredient that's going to deliver and uh, enhance and mount the immune response in a vaccine. So we're looking at trying to identify the weak spot, the Achilles heel of the virus, and try to reconstitute that, try to make it such that if you then inject that into a vaccine, his immune response will focus exactly on that. And so if he encounters then the live virus, he knows directly where to go and knock it out. So this is something we've been working on now for 15 years. This well, hasn't you, been you. Okay, you've been working on it for 15 years. You've just received the patent. Give us a sense of the timetable. What were the next steps and, and what kind of time frame, if it moves ahead successfully, are we talking about? Okay, so let me go back to history just briefly. And so we started with SARS. We learned how to identify the weak spot and reconstitute it, implemented in MERS. And now, with the emergence of COVID-19 virus, we're working hard since January to simply recreate what we've already succeeded in the past. And so what we need to do, I hope, in the course of the next month or two months, is to produce the Achilles heel, the weak spot of the virus. Now, if we're successful, then we have to partner with the industry. Because as you know, vaccines are complicated. And we're a research institute, we're a research laboratory in a Tel Aviv University. And so under the circumstances, we're very optimistic that in the course of, I would say, maybe a month, two months, we will have the prototype of what we can then work in partnership with the industry to make that vaccine that you would like to be able to receive. But of course, there's a process, and one of the reasons you have to partner with industry, of testing the all crucial element. So even at... Uh, at the, we, we do hear people saying, do not expect anything before, before six months to a year and this kind of thing. We are talking, in a sense, about that, yes? Yes, but, you know, we're not actually suggesting to revamp the whole thing. Right. Our uh, innovation is something that can markedly enhance and improve the existing effort that is being made by various companies like Johnson & Johnson or Moderna and others we've discussed in the past. And so we feel confident that if we're able to actually reach the product that we're trying to develop, it will be easily implemented and added to the same effort that everybody's working on. So I don't think that our work is going to postpone the development, but rather focus and increase the efficiency of those vaccines that others are trying to develop. That's complicated, but we just have about a minute left. I do want to ask you, everybody's talking about... You just fix my glasses. Everybody's right. talking about herd immunity. How likely is it that out of a natural process, the majority of the population will develop an immunity to the COVID-19 over the coming year? Effective herd immunity is going to require that, I would say, at least 80 to 90 percent of the population is immune, either via vaccine or through the disease. Now, we're nowhere near that with the disease thus far. I think that the uh, numbers that people have given are somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 15, maybe the, the, the most extensive exaggerations might be 30 percent, but nowhere near 80 percent coverage. So in order to actually have an effective herd immunity effect, you, de you do need that level of immunity in the population. So quite frankly, the only thing that's really going to work is a prophylactic vaccine, something that we inject and allow those that have been vaccinated to mount the effect of protective immunity. All right, well, hopefully that will be at some point in the future, but of course there are no shortcuts and these things have to be tested, have to be developed. As you said, we certainly wish your effort uh, will become fruitful as it moves along. Professor Jonathan Gershoni of Tel Aviv University. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for joining us.